Hi, Judy from Witch Peace Craft. Welcome to today's video. It's Sunday and it is time for my yarn adventures. The week that was. The catch up on what I've been doing the past week. Well, hashtag catch ups, mainly crochet. Um, I have some finished objects for you that are from Whips from 2022 that I'm, sorry, my eyes itching. <laughs> Happy to finish. Um, I have Amigurumi Wars. And a few other things and a bit of life chat at the end about something that happened this week that you never leave the boys alone with a bank account so guys let's get started so first up I'll do the finished objects and whips from 2022 um, I might need my glasses for this so I was doing the Make Along Rock 2022 AU and what a, part of that for me was I did a zigzag blanket but I also did squares for a stained glass windows blanket because the International Year of Stained Glass for the United Nations was last year, 2022. During the Christmas break when I didn't have much mojo I sewed the squares together and I have put a border on it now. I do remember saying to Reeves, would you like to learn to sew squares together? And he goes, no, I wouldn't take that away from you. I know how much you love it. I don't like sewing squares together or putting squares together. If I was to ever do something like this again, I would do join as you go. Maybe like a C2C um, to where you join as you go. So my stained glass blanket for Rock 2022 is now finished it's stained glass windows where i've designed it and i just put a um half double crochet border all the way around it so the pattern i followed was stained glass windows by julie romano etheridge that one however i didn't do the join it the way she did or do her border but i did it my own way so they have it. I did it my way. <laughs> That's my blanket. There'll be a picture of it opened up at the end. Um, I used Spotlight Marvel 8 ply, which I have a lot of. And um, normally I don't mind it, but I found as I finished it, it feels a little stiff and hard. So hopefully when I wash it, it'll um, soften up. But I generally give these to charity. These are my charity blankets. So that's number one. Whip finish from 2022. So the next one is I do like to do luck of the draw. I've done a few with Nan's next knots. And I believe her luck of the draw number seven will start early February this year. So I did luck of the draw number six, but I hadn't put a board around it. I'd been avoiding it. Um, but I did that too. Ta -da, there it is luck of the draw six with its order yet again I just did a half um, double crochet border but this pattern is by creative grandma it is the he easy holiday blanket and I did use her tutorial to guide me with the border and there'll be a picture of this at the end Ta -da! luck of the draw number six this is spotlight cocoon yarn it's beautiful and soft someone said they have discontinued it which is really disappointing it's an eight ply yarn or dk three weight yarn but yes i'm really happy with that that turned out really lovely and soft and that is ready for another charity blanket if someone doesn't want to off me Finished object number two from 2022. So earlier this week, and I have to check my notes, I was watching, uh, the channel is Little I Like at Crochet Yarns. Have I written it down? Da -da -da -da. Nope, here it, nope, haven't written it down. Anyway, let me have a look. So. She's running a make along crack the whip mail 2023 and um yeah little like it she's in the UK and for the life of me I only watched this morning and I cannot remember her name and yes she's running a make along on Ravelry 
Crack the Whip 2023 and it is for knitting and crochet. So I thought I might post my um, two blanket pictures in that because I am so happy to put borders on and finish them. I only finished both of them yesterday. So that is one of my hashtags I am going to enter into just for the fun of it. And what else can I say about that? Not a lot. I'm a bit disorganized this morning. I've got a bit of a headache. Um, so next I'm going to do Amigurumi Wars. So I love Amigurumi Wars. I can't say it enough. And it's hosted by y.o.h crochet Anita. Anita just put out the rules for 2023 if you're considering joining. I'll put a link to that video in the description below. Make sure you check it out. I have made my first item for January. So um, this was inspired because I was watching the news and, and the news about what's happening in Ukraine. And I think because it's been going a while, we tend to forget about them. And I think Reeves said, can you imagine the Christmas they had? So I bought this pattern last year. It's a paid for pattern. And I decided to make the candle hug, Ukraine candle hug. Ta-da! There it is. That is actually pale lemon. It's a sunflower because that's their national flower. But yes, I made a candle hug for Ukraine. So let's not forget about the people in Ukraine and what a terrible Christmas they would have had and how life is treating them at the moment. So yeah, it was really easy to make. It was, it's a paid for pattern on Etsy. Um, Valerie's Cuddly Cat Crochet on YouTube. She has a channel. And it is Valerie's Cuddly Cat on Etsy. I can't remember how much it costs. I know at the time when she was selling it, a percentage of the sales went to um, a charity for the Ukraine. But I think he's really cute. It was so easy to make in the sense that I could do bits of it in my lunch hour at work when I was busy. And to be perfectly honest, I can't leave it anywhere low or lying around because for some reason... My dog, Saxon, really wants this. He, I've had other amigurumis lying around, but every time he sees this, he wants this, but he's not getting it. So there you go. My candle hug for Ukraine. And let's not forget about our friends in Ukraine. If you're looking for patterns, you can always put in your search Ukraine and buy from a Ukraine designer. They can still get money into their bank accounts, and I think they need every little bit of help we can give them. So that's my Amigurumi Wars so far for January. I'm really happy with that. Also, it took 70 grams of scrap yarns. So this is um, Spotlight Super Saver, which is like Red Heart Super Saver. And this is yellow from um, I Love This Yarn that was sent to me by Janet Lupre. So the way I'm going to enter this into Soxy Nana's Scrappy, so it's called hashtag Scrappy, Soxy Scrappy Mal 2023. Now, her make along is run on Instagram and it can be any craft sewing, knitting, crochet. Now, my personal rules for scrap yarn are it has to weigh 49 grams because if it's 50 grams, it's a ball of yarn. So, in total, it's 70. And I didn't use 50 grams of any particular colour or 49 grams of any particular colour. So that is a scrap yarn project to me, as well as Amigurumi Wars. Double dipping. Ta -da! Now, if you double dip, is it okay to triple dip? That is my question to you guys. Let me know in the description below whether you should triple dip, double dip or not at all. I don't think double dip goes too badly because, you know, we make a lot of things. Um, so, yeah, make sure you check out Soxy Nana's Scrappy Make Along. I'll put a link to that in the description below as well. So, the other make along I'm doing is, and I'll just pause the video. Yes, I am doing the Bod Hat 
a plaza, a plaza, with Mad Mimi's um, crochet and farming. We're doing 52 hats, one a week. The first hat was the easy blue hat. Now, I don't wear hats, so you should feel privileged because I am going to try and break my fear of wearing hats and model some of them. I really like this one. It was such a breeze to make and it fits really well. I have to take it off because it's incredibly hot here. As you can see, it has a little, no like um, band or rib. It has this beautiful um, crab stitch edging, which I've never done before, and I really enjoyed it. I made this out of Spotlight Super Saver in the blue. So this is the Bag o Day or Bod um, Crochet Easy Blue Crochet Hat, and that was for week one. Now. I've been playing catch up, so I'm not sure if I should be showing you week two, but I'm going to. So for this one, I used cast on cotton cake, which I discovered last year at a, um, a local, I guess you call them dollar store, five dollar store. Anyway, it's 60% cotton, 40% acrylic. It's supposed to be a four weight. It's probably a little fine. Um, it's 4.5. Now, I had color um, control a Japanese knot bag which happened to be another bag a day pattern and I had all these bits and pieces left over and I decided because the next hat was the easy bucket hat for adult or child I'd use it in that now I made the child size I um, I think I used a five millimeter crochet hook I went down to what crystal said and there you have my bucket hat and I used up the colours from that yarn because there was a pretty close to 90, maybe 100 grams. There's still some left of that yarn. But this was really, like this is the herringbone stitch and it was easy enough to make. I love the herringbone stitch but what I found hard on my hands, my old hands, is using a cotton blend for this stitch. It was, my hands did tend to ache a bit, but I now have a child size bucket hat. So I have made two of the 52 hats we're going to make, 50 to go. And you know what? I'm really impatient for the next hat. I'm like, where is it? Where is it? Because I've really enjoyed this. And let's face it, Crystal at Bag of Day, her tutorials are so clear and so easy and with this one like she gives you tips that if you want it smaller go down a hook size they're very easy to make and they always turn out really nice so I don't know if I'll put this on my um, charity sword to sell because it's still quite warm here and parents are always looking for hats but this one will go to charity so Mad Mimi's Farming and Crochet the bod hat a plaza a plaza i wish she'd picked an easiest hashtag i can't get my tongue around it so that's that one and then what else have i done Ta -da! so mad mimi's crochet and farming is also has the hashtag shop my stash yes so this morning i went shopping in my stash here is my shopping basket. I bought this from Silly Sollies, which is like a $5 store because I bought two. I think these baskets are great for when you're making a blanket. And I went through and picked out, you know, one ball, one ball, one ball, one ball. And this is shopping my stash. I am going to use this for hats. Um, amigurumis, anything I think of. If I can make something with a ball and it turns out nice, that'll be a one skein project. But I did do shop my stash and I suggest you guys do it because I think it's an awesome idea. It's a way of rounding up all those one balls or those balls that you've used a little bit of but they're not really scraps. And yeah, I had fun doing that this morning. And now this sits in my craft corner next to my chair near the TV. And when I'm deciding I need to make something, 
I will be going to that basket. However, do I need to make something? Well, as of this morning, I have 14 whips on the go. I had 21 in December and I did reduce it a bit. I made some, I think I made, I finished five. I crafted, um, I frogged a couple because I didn't like them. And now I finished two. But since the 1st of January, I've cast on some knitting. I've started some crochet and I'm up to 14 whips. So the new rule for me is I have to finish something before I start something other than amigurumi. Because when I, I have finished my amigurumi, I will start another one, which will make it 15 whips. But yes, someone um, I was watching was saying that they had like 11 whips and were freaking out. And I'm thinking, wow, they wouldn't want to be me. <laughs> I'd be having a nervous breakdown when I had 21 whips. But guys, how many whips do you have on the go? I have a friend who only has one or two. She can't handle any more. Um, mainly because she stresses over getting them finished or are you a monogamous whip do you just make the one finish it and start a new one let me know in the comments below I'd be really interested and is there anybody out there crazier than me that has more than 21 whips at one time so life update well that's it for my crafting um, next week I may have some knitting to show you I have a lot of big knitting projects on the go and some knitting whips I am trying to finish but these are challenging whips for me it's not like um, something I've done always like making a hat and how quick I am at getting at amigurumi you never know make sure you watch next week for the crafting so bit of a life update so I went back to work on Tuesday because Monday was a public holiday and I was flat strap at work but Reeves is on holiday and Thing is retired. And I came home Tuesday afternoon to a new big, and I mean big, TV with surround sound in the lounge room. And up here is the old TV because this is why you never leave the boys alone with a bank account. First of all, the cricket started and it's the five day test. And it's the pink test, which I don't mind supporting. The pink test is for the McGrath Foundation. Jay McGrath died about 18 years ago. Maybe I'm a bit out there from breast cancer. And it was started up to, to um, fundraise for breast cancer nurses. I think it's about 400000 $450,000 to have a breast cancer nurse for three years or something that, to fund a breast cancer nurse. Anyway, they have the pink test. Now, if you don't know much about cricket, I'm going to give you a brief history. It goes five days. That's it. And as far as I'm concerned, watching grass grow is far more interesting than a test cricket match. However, the pink test, people dress up in pink. The stumps are pink. The ball's pink. There's pink everywhere. And they fundraise for the McGrath Foundation. Of course, Glenn McGrath, her husband, was a very very um, well-known Australian cricketer and very talented and they boys like to watch the cricket but not only that the Dakar rally started and there's that to watch as well now I don't mind the Dakar rally because we watch it on SBS and it's a brief overview and I, I find motor racing quite interesting and I do like the cinematography of the Dakar rally not getting into the politics that it's organised and run in Saudi Arabia. That just gets left at the door. But the boys decided that, you know, if they're going to be watching the cricket and the Dakar rally, we need a really good TV. Because after all, this one that's now up here is 10 years old. And that was their reason for buying a TV. Plus, I could sit in here and watch YouTube and patterns on this one. So they were thinking of me, so I could have peace and quiet. Yeah, right. Trust me. I put a lock on the bank account. You cannot trust these boys. I don't know what I could come home to next week because Reeves is still on holiday and they were whispering the other day. So we will see. That is my life update. 
work will be very busy till the 1st of January, 31st of January, when we do our annual scholarship presentation. The scholarship applications are pouring in. Families who have kids who are talented, they liked them to go to university, but it's so expensive. And yes, we do have a generous budget this year, more than last year. I don't decide on the amounts, I just get it ready. The committee decide. So that's the rewarding side of it. When we do the ceremony on the 31st, the appreciation from the parents and the kids who can go off to uni when we award them a scholarship. But one of the things I noticed this year that's different from the applications, there are quite a few students going off to do a Bachelor of Information Technology and um, Cyber Crime. Because obviously it's a growing thing, cyber crime. Um, a couple of big places were hit here in Australia and um, one of them was a phone company, uh, Medibank, uh, one of our medical services was hit and hacked. So yes, quite a few um, boys and girls are considering doing a bachelor in um, information technology and cybercrime. Something new always in my job after eight years of doing it, but I do enjoy it. I just, I'm nervous about going to work next week and what they'll be when I get home. <laughs> Boys, they're terrible. All the reasons they gave me for a new TV were to help me. You know, they just sit and watch cricket in the Dakar because what else is there to do when it's raining outside? Anyway, guys, I hope you join in some of the hashtags. There are so many more out there. And don't forget mine, Yarn Vacation AU, which could also now become Snake Vacation AU because there are a lot of people making snakes. Until next time, stay safe, stay well, and don't forget our friends our crafters, our designers in the Ukraine and how tough they're doing it. When life gets tough for you, remember they're doing it a lot tougher than we are. Bye for now.